Hey gang, we're in Tucson today, and we're at a smaller size cemetery called Binghampton, established in 1899. Gates are closed, but we can we can walk in. Very sad story today on this hot day in Tucson, hot and dry. I love it. Good day for a walk in a cemetery. Well, we're going to visit the grave of a 19-year-old young woman who was murdered. And again, it's one of these stories of the judges and people getting off. No justice. Doesn't sound like it. So let's take a walk. Gate's right over here. It looked to be open when I drove up. So we should be able to get in. Yep. I'm going to actually leave the gate open because we don't have that far to walk. So Diana was, like I said, 19 years old. She had her whole life ahead of her here. And it was just before Halloween, the night of October 22nd in 92. Yeah, she was at this this high school, Palo Verde, and she later drove a classmate home from there. It's about midnight. And then she was seen around then at the parking lot of the Tucson Convention Center. And then she was not seen after that. Very odd. Of course, everyone was looking for her, but no luck. But horrifyingly, literally two days later, on October 24th, 1992, her arms and only her arms were found wrapped in plastic, plastic bags. They were found in a trash bin behind a business here in town. Now the autopsy indicated that her arms had been severed off her body after death, thank God. And two days later they would find her car on October 26th. It was a gray Ford Mustang and it had her purse, books, a lot of other items. A lot of other items of hers. And as the police investigation progressed, more and more information would finally start to come out on this. Now there had been a party in that area the night before her car was found. The police kind of honed in on that party turned out the action and where the near where the party was or the party was was a place called the New Orleans Club. It was kind of the hot spot in town. They interviewed employees. Now one of the employees, a guy named Troy Olson, he said, oh yeah, 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 I recognize her. I recognize her. But Apparently, some of the witnesses had said she was leaving with another man. And when they confronted Troy about that, he really didn't seem to remember. He didn't recognize any man, which was kind of odd, just to start with. Now, here's a young woman to remember, Lizette. How sad, I wonder, I wonder what happened. Well, when people, you know, when they started getting through the witnesses, there was a name that would come up. Lemuel Pryon was the name. And of course, Troy wasn't owning up to that. 
because about 17 months later, in January of 95, Troy saw photographs on the news. Actually, it was in the newspaper, the Tucson Weekly, and it was on the cover. And he's like, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I recognize, I recognize them. I recognize that guy. Yeah, I know that guy. So all of a sudden, it was kind of an epiphany for him. Yeah, that's Lemuel, Lemuel Pryon. Suddenly, his memory came back to life. So with the police, they kind of, they had been zeroing in on this guy, and they would eventually arrest him. Troy would say that he, he would later say that he was the one that introduced them. So you have to, you know, when, when, I, when I was researching this and you put these pieces together, unless I'm missing something, you have to go, hey, Troy, buddy, what are you, are you covering something up? You know, at first or for over a year, he's like, oh, I don't know, I don't know, you know. I recognize her, but I don't know this guy. But wait, I introduced them. You wouldn't remember that, right? Hmm. So something's up with that. Something is up with that. So anyway, they, they've, they're honing in on this Lemuel guy. Turns out that she went off with him and then they never returned to the bar. She said she was going to come back. They started investigating this guy and it turns out he's a, a carpenter. And during the week, on the weekdays, he was a nursing home assistant. He worked the weekend shift for the Golden Years Nursing Home. In December of 1992, he told, he told his nursing home employer that he was afraid he was going to kill someone. This would all come out later, of course. And in addition, he also owned several knives, including a machete. He had been to a recording studio located near the dumpster where Diana's arms were discovered. So all these pieces were coming together. He also had a habit of talking about committing violent acts on women. Hmm. He often spoke of being ripped off by women. He resented women. Where's this going? Well, he told his brother and sister-in-law about having threatened or having thought about threatening a woman with a machete but ultimately coming to his senses and releasing her. He made similar statements to former cellmates, a couple of guys, Jeffrey Brown and Jerry Wilson. A lot of stuff was mounting up. So they did speak to him and he would never admit anything. But, Upon seeing, you know, they did the old sit at the table. They would, you know, as they do, you see it on the crime channels, you sit at the table and then they shove over a photograph. Do you recognize her? You know, and he said something to the effect of, you know, kind of like, oh, wow, she's, I wouldn't forget her with, you know, and he made a reference to how she was built. I'm not going to say. But he goes, I wouldn't forget that. So that kind of alarmed the investigators right then. They're just like, yeah, that's really kind of a weird statement to make, even if you're a weird person like this guy. Here's a another grave. I'm just kind of, we're just kind of strolling through here. I'm gonna pause to pay respects to Chelsea Marie. Bradinger. She was born March 14, 1987 and passed June 14, 2009. 2009. What a beautiful picture of a special woman. So sad. Look at that. 
in a heart. Beautiful, beautiful granite stone. Well, of course, after he said that, her mom, Diana's mom, said, well, yeah, my daughter was like that, so that does match up with the story. So, it turned out they, they were tracking him for that, but they, they did eventually arrest him, go to trial. He was convicted. It all came together. And he was sentenced to death for Diana's murder. Isn't that great? Justice, right? Well, in addition, he was sentenced for the kidnapping of a prostitute with a 15-year sentence in addition to that. So let's walk over to her grave, which is right over here. And she is apparently buried with another, another young woman. I believe it was a young woman right here. Kathleen Pachos. No, she's not that young. Now, is that her mom? She died in 2000. That could be her mom. I don't know. But we continue the story. So we fast forward to August of 2022. Lemuel Pryon had his conviction and death sentence thrown out by the Arizona Supreme Court here. Why? Well, the court said that one of the reasons for its decision was that he wasn't allowed to introduce evidence that pointed to another suspect during the trial. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. We forgot about that. And Brian's attorney, he wanted to introduce evidence that this other guy named John Mazur had committed the crime. And it said that this John Mazur saw Diana the night of the disappearance, concealed information from the police when questioned, and appeared to work the day after her disappearance so disheveled and disoriented that he was fired. Oh my gosh, well that should just exonerate anybody, wouldn't you think? So yeah, all charges were dropped, set him free. Fortunately, he had to stay in jail because of other charges. I wonder where he is now. I'm sure he's not in jail. Sadly, as far as we know, as far as I know, standing here telling you this terrible story, Diana's body has never been found. So let's talk a little bit about Diana. Now, Diana graduated from Tuller School and was attending Pima Community College. She had hoped to become a marine biologist. Her mom, Kathy, who is buried here also, I believe this is Kathy, said Diana had a ready smile and a quick wit. She faced life with joyous enthusiasm. She was a true friend. Her motto was, trust is my middle name. She was a team player and always spoke up for what she thought was right. She loved children and animals. Diana left an ache in our hearts and a hole in our souls. We will always miss her. Well, hopefully Kathleen and Diana are resting in peace here and hopefully they are in a better place. I usually bring a yellow rose. I'm on this trip. I wasn't able to pick up a flower. So hopefully somebody, maybe someone can come out and, and drop, a, drop some flowers off. I usually do it, but I, I couldn't today. Sorry, gang. Sorry, Diana and Kathleen. So rest in peace. Rest in peace.